I have some fragrances here that I would never purchase again. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay, let's jump into this video. Okay guys, so welcome back and thank you so much for joining me. As promised, I'm going to show you guys some fragrances that I purchased that I regret today and I will never repurchase these fragrances. Some of them, I'm going to keep them and some of them, I'm just definitely going to get rid of. But the first fragrance that I'm going to show you is a great example of having a fragrance in your collection that you like but you almost never wear it for whatever reason. It just sits there and it gets nowhere. So there's really never ever a point in repurchasing this scent. The fragrance I'm talking about is Chloe and I believe this one is Low. If it's not Low then I'll just put the correct name here. Okay, so I adore the original Chloe fragrance and that would explain why I got this flanker. This actually was not a blind buy. I tested this one and I didn't buy it right away. I waited for the next day to purchase it and um, which is why it surprises me that I'm not using this one. But when I explain it to you guys, you get it. So this one smells very similar to the original Chloe. It has the original Chloe DNA, so it's very clean and soapy. So they are definitely sisters. I would say that this one is more of the baby sister because it doesn't pack a punch like the original. And I think that's probably the issue that I have with this one. So this is a little bit different in that it is lighter, it is fresher, it is more airy, and it's definitely a bit more citrusy. So I think this one is intended for like the summery months. And that's good and all, but to me, if you have the original Chloe and you see how well it performs and just how like just powerful it is, you just would probably never reach for this one. And that's the, the reason why I never put for this one. It just does not perform the way the original does. It's a little bit too flimsy. It, it's a little bit too light. It wears very closely to the skin. But I would say it's a beautiful scent. It's very soapy and I, you know how I feel about soapy uh, fragrances. But it's just way too light. It's too airy. It just doesn't make any sense for me to wear this one anymore. I'm definitely going to keep it in my collection. Maybe as time goes on, I'll reach for it. But for now, I just can't never see myself repurchasing this one. So yeah. So the second fragrance that I will never purchase is from the house of Guerlain and that is Mont Guerlain and this is the Eau de Toilette. So if you guys are subscribed to my channel, you've seen this fragrance before and I always have the same opinion of this fragrance and that is I just don't like it. A lot of people rave about the EDP. I've never tried the EDP, but I'm hoping to try that one soon. But to be honest, I can't imagine it being so different from this one, but it just may be. So it starts out very citrusy. I really like the opening. You get that beautiful, clean, sparkling lavender scent. And at, at this point, I like it. I think what I honestly don't like about this scent is probably what everybody likes about the scent and that is the vanilla because it does come in and makes things a little bit more sweet, a little bit more warm, but it just doesn't do enough. It smells way more mature than I like and that's saying a lot because I don't have a problem with smelling mature, but I do have a problem with how aldehyde this one feels. So it has like this very scratchy, uh, soapy kind of feel to it. On the upside, it does last a long time. It is a classy scent and I could see why many people would like this one. The EDT is just not my thing and I would never repurchase this one. I'm just going to add this one to my Mercari store since I know for a fact I'm never going to use this because I know I'm never going to like it. The next fragrance that I'm going to show you is the reason why I like to stay in my little box of you know fragrances that I know I'm going to like because sometimes when I take that risk and try something different and new I end up not liking it that I kick myself because I kind of know that I know myself and I know what I'm going to like. So I kind of just took 
the bait and buy this one because a lot of people are talking about this fragrance. It's called Chalmar Souffle de Parfum. This is the EDP, by the way. So this one, I really wanted to like it. I really wanted to explore my options. I wanted to try something different. I knew it was going to be something um, a little bit different than, than what I usually would go for. But like I said, I wanted to really, really try something different. I was hoping so much to like this one, especially because the bottle is gorgeous this is another one i'm gonna add to my makari store because it's another one that i just i'm not gonna have it sitting in my collection because i know i'm never gonna use it on i could definitely just try it out and see but i'm not even tempted to use this one i'm not tempted to wear it out or maybe i should i don't know but mm -mm. so the dominant notes in this one in my opinion is um lemon and vanilla so in reading the notes i kind of felt like it should be something that smells nice especially when you read the reviews on this and everybody's saying that it smells like lemon cake i don't i don't get that like i don't get that at all I'm not sure why anybody would smell this and get cake or gourmand what i really get from this is just a very pungent lemon scent and then under that you have the vanilla. I'm getting nothing gourmand from this one. If anything, I'm getting something a little aquatic, very salty. It does come off a, a bit perfumey. I'm just, I'm not getting this one. And I'm like, I really, really want to because I love the bottle. I just love the whole presentation. I like the direction that this fragrance was going in until it got to the base where the vanilla kind of felt too um, oriental. It felt kind of balmy. I don't like balmy vanilla yeah it's just it's unfortunate but someone's gonna be happy because i'm gonna add this to my mercari store but another fragrance that i tried and i thought i would really like this one because it's coming from a house that i like and i'm talking about narciso and this is called narciso rouge and this is the eau de toilette they do have the auto parfum i decided to go with the edt because a lot of reviews said that it was lighter and just easier to wear and that sounded more of what i like i don't like heavy stuffy perfumes just my preference so this fragrance as soon as i smelt it i kind of felt mm, like i felt deflated because i kind of wasn't expecting it to be what it is what I get from this one is basically a red lipstick smell. It smells so much like either red lipstick or like a red leather bag. I know that's so weird and it's weird to describe a perfume in that way. And typically, I don't mind that that lipstick note because I think sometimes in fragrance that lipstick note could come off a little bit niche and different and, you know, classy and elegant. So sometimes the lipstick note is fine. An example of a good lipstick note is the one found in Calvin Klein's Eternity Intense. To me, that's a good lipstick, uh, lipsticky type of smell because it's sweet, it's powdery, have that elegance to it. But this one to me is just too straight up lipstick. I don't feel as though it has enough um, around it. For me to like it, I even went as far, I was so desperate, I sprayed this one on my 10 year old daughter just to see what it would smell like coming from someone else. I know I'm crazy, I know that's crazy. I just wanted to see what it's like on someone else. So I sprayed this on her and uh, I, I just, I don't know. This one I'm also going to put on my Mercari because I just don't see myself reaching for this one. It's not a bad scent, it's just one of those fragrances I know for a fact I'm never ever going to reach for this one. We have three more to go. The next fragrance that I want to show you is by Hugo Boss and this is the scent for her. So I totally blame myself for this one because I really kind of took a risk when I tried this one. I knew the craze was um, about the private accord version because it had that cacao note and I mean I know for a fact that this one was going to be a little bit different but this this fragrance is just it's too underwhelming. I mean, I think it's a nice scent. In, if I'm being completely honest, it is a nice scent. It's a nice combination of peach and cacao. The cacao is barely there. So if you're thinking, oh, peach, cacao, oh, like I was thinking, no. This is more of a peachy, musky scent. And yes, there's a light dusting of cacao, but not enough to even um, to warrant even saying that it, it, it is in this perfume. The only reason why I'm bringing up the cacao is because it's one of the reasons I purchased it. But do not purchase this scent thinking that's what you're going to get. This is just basically 
a light peach scent uh, very musky it's airy so i do like that about it it will make a nice summer scent a nice going to bed kind of scent but at this point in my perfume career this is just a little bit too underwhelming too ordinary now i'm looking for extraordinary fragrances if it sounds like something that you'd like definitely check it out it's gonna be on my makari store i know a lot of people like it um the only um complaint that i see of this one is never about the smell it's usually about how light it is and just um how it performs okay so i left the two big hitters for last and the last one is definitely going to be a surprise. I don't think this one is going to be a surprise too much. Uh, this one is Girl of Now by Ellie Saab. I already made it clear in a previous video that this fragrance is not for me. I tried. Even if a perfume is not perfect, I try to look beyond the, the imperfections. And I try to just really warm up to the fragrance. And just to pick out the positives about the fragrance. But in this case, for me... The, the negatives outweigh the positives. Like, that's just my opinion here. And I think the more you... It's kind of weird, right? How everybody was going crazy over this scent. Everybody loves it. You could not find a negative review about this scent. And then as soon as the craze is over, everybody's decluttering this scent. What if a sudden people don't like it? I'm just saying. You can't say I never said that this was too synthetic. I've always said that. I like the sweet notes. I like the pear. I like the nutty... Uh, I like the, the almond note. I do like that. But let me tell you, the synthetics in here, I don't know like who the perfumer is. At this point, it's just too much. This one is just a no-no for me. On the plus side, it's a Siage Monster. It lasts forever. So if you like this one, you will definitely like that aspect of it. But for me, it's a, it's a definite no. If you follow my channel, you will know that this is just, you know, it's a no for me. It's just a no for me. Okay, I know y'all saw Miss LaBelle sitting there looking all pretty. And that's because she almost made this list. Not including her was a last minute decision. I need to wear her one more time before deciding if she stays or go. Keep it locked though. Okay guys, so that's it for me and this list. I hope this video was somewhat helpful. I mean, it's gonna go both ways. You're gonna have people that like the scent and wanna purchase it. So if that's the case, you could jump over to my Mercari store. And if you've never tried it, you've just learned a thing or two about these fragrances. So of course it's gonna help you out. So either way, it's gonna help you guys out. Okay guys, so that's it for me. Don't leave without liking. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to comment. All those things just help the channel out. Okay guys, so that's it.